Second Pipe Masters, we are about to go live with our second best of three of the night. The last best of three of the night, but it is the second best of three of Group C, at least. Titan versus Hellraisers. Yeah, and uh, Hellraisers ended up picking Train, so now I'm excited. And also scared at the same time. Um, it happens, dude! It yeah. actually happened. Yeah, and and Cash as well. All my dreams could be crushed mm. tonight, Samla. All of them. Uh, but no, I'm really excited, because actually... Um, like everything that I've been running around trying to figure out on train so far has been like all theory crafting, and I mm -hmm. actually have very little idea about how the game plays at a professional level. Uh, I just go back and you know think about how did it play in one point six, but then the map is so different that it's really hard to uh, you know to to figure out exactly how it's going to play. So now I get a real chance to see. I think I've crossed the fifteen hour mark of running around train throwing smokes on my own, just smokes. So uh, it's been it's been a lot of time. Yeah. Work for nothing else to do, you know. I'm, I'm in my hotel room, uh, you know, for a long time. Just uh, in the airport as well. Yeah. Got my laptop with me. With the little with the little trackpad, you know. Line up that smoke just right. Oh, yeah. A little bit more to the right. Exactly. You've got to download my config and also put it on a laptop with a trackpad. <laughs> oh, man. No, not like that. That's what I'm saying, man. You need to have your config up on Google Drive or something. Yeah, yeah. I'll do that at some point, I promise. Um... But it will be Cash first, um, also a very cool map, and mm -hmm. also one that I've been trying to spend some time looking at. Um, but one that actually Hellraisers used to be really good at. There's new lineup though, I don't know, Titan also really good at it, come up with uh, tons of cool stuff on this map. Um, so I, I, I think this best of three is actually going to be really good, but um, with training the mix it's hard to know if it's going to be all three maps or if it's going to be weird. I guess we'll, um, I guess we'll find out soon I mean, enough. I, the tricky bit is that even before Hellraisers were a solid cash team, even before the roster change. Yeah. So it's like Titan, we know that cash is one of their one of their favorite maps to play on, basically. It's one of their go to. But since the change, I mean Moo's now on the team with Hellraisers. So like what kind of level are they gonna be able to have on cash on the go to maps that they that they used to play in the past that they felt comfortable on the past? How do, how does he him coming into it change things up? I saw yeah. them play on Overpass versus Envy the other night and they made a real fight out of it. I mean Envy yeah. had to fight tooth and nail to get that win. So That's they're looking pretty good there. That's encouraging, right? Yeah. The question is, you know, like cash. This is the fun thing, though. This is this could be basically Penta or Penta Hellraisers throwing everybody for a loop, saying, "Well, it's a new, uh, you know, it's a new map. Yeah, we're gonna be the first to get good at it. We're gonna be the first with some strats that are gonna catch everybody off guard." I hope so. I really do. Um, I'm ex I'm I'm really excited, and also, like I said, a little bit scared. Um, Titan, though, the lineup is um, Existence, Maniac, Kenny, S, Apex, and RPK. If you didn't know, you should know already. But if you mm -hmm. didn't, then here they are. Really powerful lineup. Still, I said around the time of um, Katowice, the last major, that I thought they were about three months away. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think they're quite there yet. I think they need like another month ish basically before we're really there they've had uh they recently like after esca <coughs> they took a bit of a vacation uh three of them along with their managers still stayed along uh stayed in america went on a bit of a road trip saw the grand canyon you know all that's cool stuff wow. right you know so they took a bit of a step away from cs during that time but now for the past week uh, for the past four or five days or so they've been back cracking so they're gonna have they're gonna be fresh they're gonna come into it they're gonna have had time to reset a little bit and come into the game with a bit of a fresh uh, fresh look at things yeah so that's going to be really good, I think. You need, you need to be able to take a step away every now and again, basically, to reset your bearings. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, I think, I think they, are, they have the makings of, like, a, a really a top, like, you know, top three team-ish in the world, uh, mm -hmm. which they're not right now, but, um, but I think they have a, the chance no. to be. Um, that's, that's, they're that's, definitely, like, top six, though. Yeah. Yeah, I would, I would well, put them up there. They're, yeah. they're within our top seven. I mean, pretty flat yeah. out. They're within our top seven. After yeah. that, you get the order down, but, like, as far as the actual – you know, top seven in the world ranks, whatever the order, Titan are in it. What I'm saying is, TSM recently had their, like, ascension into, like, you know, our finally winning events. Uh, Na'Vi had the big event, like, the big victory in Cologne. Mm -hmm. I think Titan is, like, like well, not overdue, but I think they're, like, a month away from having, like, a similar breakthrough where it's like, oh, wow, Titan, you know. Like, I think they're they're about to be there. Mm -hmm. But I do think it's another month. I think the, the putting RPK fully into the lineup and everything else, I think it's going to matter a lot. And just having him, like, oh, people yeah. forget, just having hours played on RPK is still a thing. Like, yeah. he still needs to catch up on hours played. So that's why I said three months to begin with. Now, um... Going into cash though, I actually I would say Titan is the favorite team in this in this matchup here. I think they can I think they can beat Hellraisers on in this best of three. I think so too because you know one guy. It's funny you know it used to be that we would the first and only man you would talk about basically on Titan. Yeah, was Kenny. Kenny, and now we're not really seeing. Well, you know it's it feels like since the op update he's been kind of a shadow of his former self. Like yeah. he hasn't really been able to provide that level. I think it's temporary. 
in my opinion. I think it's just temporary. I think he'll be right back soon enough. I have a lot of confidence in Titan, as you can tell. Hellraisers, yeah. though, um, their lineup, Angel, Dovisha, Kucha, Adren, and then Mu. Um, so the uh, the Kazakhstanian player there. Also Adrian from Kazakhstan, as you can tell. Um, as far as I know, they all moved to Kiev to play. That was at least the news that we heard about. Um, they just should such have a cool moved. idea. I think it was the third or the fourth of the of this month that they were supposed to move over here. So yeah, quite possibly this uh, this team, especially the core of it, um, like the most upsetting team to have followed in, in all of global offensive. Like in terms of like their potential, their like you know, and then it looks good and then it looks horrible and it's confusing. You don't know what's happening and mm -hmm. just very up and down. I would say. Well, like they went. Well, Virtus Pro, the core of this team, were on the Virtus Pro that broke Nip's 87 and 0 record. Yeah, they went on to then form the super team with Edward and Markaloff, uh, Stana Dragons. That didn't go through. Then they later on went on to Hellraisers. Now here we are today, and never really able to get that same result. Like ever since they beat uh, Nip, yeah, it's always been this kind of fluctuation. They've we've we've kind of like jokingly made them into like the the bracket wreckers. Yeah, they where, sure exactly. You know, like they'll they'll win in the groups when there's just you know it's just like just get out of the groups, right? And they'll but they'll win in the groups and like take first seed. And so then they go into the bracket and then they just get crushed by their opponents in the in the bracket. So it's just completely just like they they'll they'll come in and actually wreck. A group, and there's a lot of history actually between these two teams with Titan as well, because <clears throat> Titan got knocked out of a group because of them yeah. in the past as well. When Virtus Pro were under, were under, um, well, undervalued, I guess, whatever. But yeah. People, um, why am I looking for the, the wrong word? Underrated, undervalued, underestimated. That's it. Underestimated VP going into Katowice last year. Remember when it yeah, was Astana, yeah. Titan, and VP in the same group, and then Virtus Pro just like <clears throat> wreck everybody. I mean, what's interesting is. I actually had a long conversation with Angel and Thorin at DreamHack Winter 2014, where Angel said he'd been watching a lot of Thorin's videos mm -hmm. about the team, and they actually tried to make a lot of adjustments, said a lot of what Thorin was saying was was essentially true about the communication and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and they just didn't really know how to fix it. So I'm, I think they're trying all the time. They just haven't found the, the right answer yet. But we'll see if it's going to be better tonight. It's Hellraisers versus Titan. Best of three game just starting now. You're right on time. This is Frag White Masters Group C. And let's see, Titan, they get started on the more favored side. They only have two armors as well, which is kind of interesting. Um, RPK. We're already seeing a drastic change with how they've set up. I mean, maybe yeah. this is just this round in particular, but Titan, their CT, tra their CT <laughs> positions that they're holding right now, drastic difference here as to like where you expect to see certain players on the, on the, on the map. Like Apex alone, usually Apex plays mid connector. He's alone on A right now. That's usually Maniac's spot. So already that's a big shift. Of course, everybody's on B, so there's nothing to be said about existence in RPK, but... Looks like Titan have, uh, at least in this strategy, they've come up with something different. I love what Hellraiser is doing here. It's very interesting. They're actually going to run back again. They're just making noise. They circle all the way back, and I think right now, Moo's about to be able to throw a, um, a flashbang into middle as well for Kucha to actually ro roll on. So, there's the flashbang in. Is anyone going to actually... No, they're going to run for A instead. Straight up. They're waiting in the middle instead. And he's opening up, taking down one. Apex going to drop Angel. And finally, Doja comes up with a reply in favor of Hellraisers. And it's going to be a quick follow-up. Kucha with a double kill. And that clears out the whole A bomb site now. Maniac and RPK going to have to try and clutch it here. Yeah, and it's a bit of an awkward spot for Kucha. As we can see, he kind of gets pinned down, caught out in the open. He's doing great damage to Maniac. Finally, RPK rotates in from CT and picks him off. We're into the two-on-two -two now, and RPK taking point. Five-seven in hand, just trying to get up onto this site, and he is now alone. Maniac has been picked off, and it's down to him. Mano in mano, he gets the first one, and he gets the second as well. But does he have the time? I he think does. he does. So, wow. That, that yeah. That's a bit of a mind-blowing clutch, really, and not the sort of situation you really want RPK in because of his somewhat slow sensitivity as well as, like, you know, trying to play that uh, fast in a close angle like that. Pretty impressive retake uh, for him here. And Doja just trying to see if he can make it work. That 5-7, last bullets as well. He was literally out of bullets at that point. It's going to be 1-0 in favor of Titan. 6 HP, though. 6 HP. You got to give it to Kucha, though. I mean, he was able to catch up because clearly Hellraisers, their whole pl plan rotates around killing off the defense on A quickly and then getting guys into position to catch the rotators. And Kucha does that just marvelously, but it's still Apex managing to pick up a kill. They still get kind of thinned out before they're actually onto that site. So if it weren't for Kucha and his heroic effort, essentially catching out the two guys rotating yeah. over for Titan, that would have been much cleaner for Titan. So Hellraisers trying to call it with some clever stuff, but they almost, I mean, trip and fall flat on their faces. I love the idea of running in through the vents, then running back again, circling around, ending up at A. Pretty cool stuff. Scary stuff there, though. And Hellraiser's making the... I mean, they get the bomb down, they made the AK by. So, normally, 
It's actually something Hellraisers do a lot, but a lot of other teams won't do this. They'll just, if they really want to go for it, they, they'll all go Tech Nine armor instead. But this is definitely a cool idea, and it's possible because they did get all those kills in the first um, in the first half, or like the first round. So yeah, they got a lot of bonus money. Yeah, they can use that. The big thing. I mean, it's kind of Kucher. I mean, it's Kucher as well taking the hit because he certainly dropped that AK for one of those players. I mean, he got the kill. He got a lot of kills in the pistol, but he only has a Tech Nine this round. Maniac up close on A site. There's currently three members here right now. Four Titan on this A site and a sick nade wow. onto Doja. That's gonna make things a easier. Maniac picking off Kucha to start. Yeah, gonna get the kill there. Apex and Kenny also helping out a little bit, and it's gonna be up to Angel trapped in the corner. No way out of this. He's definitely going down. Maniac with a double kill. And you're right to say that you know the earlier iterations of Titan or just earlier in there um, in, the, in, the, in this particular team, Kenny was the the old old commanding superstar. But now Apex does really well, and lately Maniac has had like mm -hmm. a personal just super performance playing out of his mind. So, yeah, the Titan team is looking more healthy. That early grenade and then the, the Hellraiser is kind of slowing down a lot, made look a little bit indecisive in that in that take. Uh, but a really clear idea, right? Going main and speedway, really good way to sandwich any kind of CTs up there. So it's still a good idea. The execution was just lacking. Yeah, that's, uh, then that, that always feels like it's been a problem with Hellraisers. Yeah. Just, you know, they, get, they can get into these positions where it looks advantageous, but then they don't know how to follow up on it or they don't have the confidence to follow up on it. It's always, the, it's always kind of a question mark. Nice spray control there by Apex to pick up another one, and he <laughs> nearly goes ahead and picks up a third. Close work, Kenny. Long range tapping with that CZ, but I think he get the one. I think Apex actually run its run away, and I think he, when he turned left and ran into Kenny, he realized I, yeah, I'm not gonna get out of here. Kenny's body blocking me. I'm gonna have to stay and fight. That was really funny. Oh man. So look at the spray down. He keeps spraying, and then he turns and is like. Nope, <laughs> I'm not leaving. <laughs> I'm just staying instead. <laughs> oh man, fourth round coming up. And Hellraiser is able to buy the AKs. Bunch of grenades as well, no problem at all. Kenny with an early AWP too, so no big surprise there. Yeah, we definitely expect to see him go to the sniper rifle as quickly as possible. He's already looking for that counter boost, and look at Titan actually going for a very hard mid control kind of strategy here with the Molotov early up on boost to stop any kind of early rush from Hellraisers. And then three players setting up a bit of a triangle of doom here, really looking to lock down this portion of the map, which is solid on cash. You know, you have some teams that, that give up mid control willingly and that play on the extremities, but the vast majority of the time you want to get mid to give you access to vents, to give you access to short, to get up onto the side and make your job easier as a terrorist. So the fact that Titan are just looking to take that away early right here, this is big. I'm not sure how exactly Apex was, uh, was tagged down initially though, if he just got kind of wall banged randomly or what. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's a bit of a problem when he's playing this close to middle because he's going to be on a lot of fire real soon. But um, he just needs a couple of kills. And with Kenny maybe taking the initial attention away from anyone coming over to the middle, they're going to be shooting at Kenny. Could be a big difference. Maniac will go down, though. That's a big opening kill. No one holding A right now. In fact, Kenny has to get back here. And he's going to get smoked off. RPK and Apex both hold. Kenny missing a shot there that he definitely shouldn't have. And now he's flashed as well. He runs right into the open arms of Adrian and... Existence, last man standing, not a lot of choice here. Uh, he's gonna be very limited indeed. He's already got somebody on his uh, heels as well. That's Kucher kind of waiting over in Checkered, expecting there to be some kind of action over on the B site. They're looking for existence, and this is pretty much what Hellraisers want to do. They can afford to give up a couple of rifles here on this hunt. And the timing here could. I mean, did they. What? Angel spotted him. Angel must have spotted him right there. Surely. Moves coming into the middle. Should be no problem. It's going to be the one kill with the Famas, and he ends up going down to Doja. So, super successful round for Hellraisers there. Just, it's sort of weird. Sometimes when you when you set up like that, and then you're really only supposed to get like a couple of entry frags, like maybe one, and that can set up the rest of the strat. Mm -hmm. When you get all the entry frags, it just looks so dominating. What was that? He must have, he was moving when he took that shot. He must have been. Yeah, <clears throat> but it still looks like it should have been dead on. Who knows? Double op set up for Titan. They actually will uh, invest into that. And Existence is carrying one of the ops, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, he has been trying to turn to that. I mean, I mean, we all remember the kind of the glory days of Titan. Titan, I'm sure they want to forget those days, but, you know, when they ran that double op with Callie and Kenny. And ever since, it's always been good for teams to, to kind of have that kind of strategy, that pocket strat to pull out at any given time. So Existence going back to the op. I mean, if you listen to Ven, Existence was a godlike op or in Source, so... You know, good to see him come back to it and see us go at least. Show that he's still capable. And we have seen him use it and put, in good, put it to good use in the past, so. Yeah, there's options. Definitely options. Kenny in the back of the A-bomb site here. And it feels like it's going to be an A-hit eventually for Hellraisers, although they are 
still controlling out tower B and middle. They really don't want to get flanked. They don't want any kind of aggressive pushes coming out from Titan. And there we go. Flash into A main. Perfect flash. That sets it up. They pick up the first one. Not going to get the second, though. Angel with the double spray. Apex and Maniac both gone. That should not have happened. Angel coming through big for his team. Third man here, however, and Kenny gets spotted. So now they're not going to get caught off guard here, Hellraisers. Kenny just a little bit too quick on the trigger, and they're going to rotate back to B, which is the perfect call for Hellraisers. Really nice, uh, nicely done here by Angel. Just spotting out the fact that that was going to be a big opening and obviously getting the double kill as well, pretty much securing the whole thing. Existence, they have the two orbs still alive, and I think right now they should aim to keep them alive instead of trying to retake here. This is... I mean, they could look for exit kills, that's fine, but um, that's even going to be tough with Doja coming in like this. Getting the spray down, almost catching Existence, and now he's going to get shot in the back any second. Actually turns 180 to get the kill on Kucha, that's a really good job. Saving these orbs is really important right now for Titan. Yes, that's, I mean, these are the most expensive rifles. This is a <clears> huge <throat> investment for them. They might be able to eke out a buy behind these in the next round, but right now, keeping both of these players alive is paramount. And, well, they are going to manage that, so... Gotta say, though, Hellraisers, they're getting an excellent read. Titan with a very quick rotation, expecting the kind of cut-and-dried play that we've seen in the past from Hellraisers, where... <laughs> no idea why Angel dies in that scenario, but okay. But, like... That was like a dare. That was, he was playing chicken with the bomb, essentially. But Titan... I mean, Titan really showing very little hesitation as far as the rotation call is concerned. They just instantly rotated over to that A site, and Hellraisers... They did a very good job just backing off and getting the proper read there. But again, Titan just getting picked off. That's going to be a main well, issue. They need to avoid that and start winning some of these duels if they want to shut Hellraisers out. Think of it this way. They get pop flashed in main, and then Angel kills two people. They know someone had to go the flash, so they know exactly, like, they just kill two and a third one, they know where it is. Oh, Existence, great grenade timing to pick off a Dren. That shot went right through them. That is almost crazy. If we consider replay of that, that would be fun as well, just because that looked like it went right through the two players for the smoke as well. But a good opening frag taking down a Dren. That was some very aggressive opping there from Existence. He actually manages to hit that. And look, again, Maniac boosted up. But this is, I mean, this is actually smart to go for in this, can, in this scenario just because they have the 5.7 on Maniac. If he can catch somebody off guard, he can do some lethal damage with that gun. Doesn't have the rifle, though. So Titan really trying to go for a little bit of a gamble here. But this is also something that you should be aware of when you play Titan. I mean, Maniac heavily favors this position. So Hellraisers, they're definitely going to be aware of that. And right now, if they take over mid, Maniac's position becomes very awkward. The best way to counter those boosts is to walk up short, because then you see him from a mile away. Yeah. It is, I mean, we've seen that fall. Uh, we've seen people fall in that position time and again, basically. Existence. Oh, he's actually going to get uh, aim punched there a little bit. Got to be careful he doesn't have any head armor, but they all have AK, so that's not going to be a big problem either. RPK inside, 5-7 in hand, and they're going to come really close here. Angel will take him out. So now it's at about even odds. Smoke is almost covering all of it, but not quite. Apex going to try and jump on it. Great flash timing from his teammates as well. Picking up the AK, back on site, 12 bullets left. Double kill for Apex, making it almost a triple. One bullet away, and Kenny will save him. Super timing from Kenny coming in from the high ground. Now it's going to be all up to Doja. He goes down, and there's the triple from Apex. That was some sublime teamwork from Titan. Wish we could replay that whole retake in, like, in slow motion. Yeah, from different perspectives yeah. as well, just to see it, because that was a thing of beauty. But talk about that Hollywood finish there. Apex is just like, no! Try to turn away, dive behind cover. Kenny just there to save his mate the last <clears> possible <throat> second. Yeah, and the flashbang to set it all up. Yeah, I mean, that's really, really nicely done. And that timing was perfect, because you're just thinking, okay, Apex, you're actually just going to risk it and run through. But with that flash, it changes everything. He drops the bomb planter as well, so that just completely wrecks the scenario for Hellraisers. Yeah. Great job, and that's going to land tight enough fourth round. And look at this, no time wasted. Hellraisers onto the site, and they are trading pretty good, considering they've got tech nines here. This is not too bad. Maniac also dropping low, and got to be a little bit careful here, but the grenade will finish off Kucha, and now Angel is all alone, and he is no longer. Maniac will take him out. And nice position, though. I mean, nice idea. Couple of tech nines being stolen, and Titan now up to 5-2. They've saved the orbs still, and um, they're just making this work, actually. Yeah, and luckily they do save that second op. The RPK able to find it in time. Apex now up to nine frags, nine, two, and five. With Kenny, though, this is good to see. For a long time, it feels like we haven't seen Kenny sitting towards the top of that scoreboard. It's been more towards the bottom of it. So the fact that he's up there second right now with six frags, if you're a Titan fan, it's got to make you feel pretty good. Hellraisers, though, after that round of eco, they're going to be able to go ahead with a pretty decent buy. And Moo, once again, has his AWP, but we've really yet to see him chime in with it. So Hellraiser's definitely going to be waiting on him to deliver, and there you go. Speak of the devil. Yeah, and that was the first kill of the game for him, by the way. He was on zero uh, kills before. So that's a really big opening, obviously. 
Dropping existence. And Apex very low on health as well. And actually, existence gets dropped right after he, he dies. So the timing is uh, at least a little bit fortunate here. Might mean we have a bit of a pause coming up. But it's a 4v4 right now. And <laughs> Maniac not going to get a chance to throw that pop flash. So it's going to be on Kenny. He can't see a thing either. But still moving up. Which is what we come to expect of Kenny. He is just a very aggressive warper. Not going to get the shot in though. He's a little bit lower again. That shot actually hits through. But Angel somehow stays alive on 20 health. RPK can't take him out. And Angel will pick up a double kill. I think Apex must have been in the background. They must have lined up for him. And Kucha to take down Kenny. Big, big result for Hellraisers here. Taking both the orbs away. And doing uh, surviving with three members. And that turns it all around. Look at this. They're not going to have much money here left on Titan. They're still in a bit of a, of a seesaw kind of uh, situation. But wow. Okay, okay. then. We're going to see a force buy out of Titan. Well, I don't know why I'm acting so surprised, though. Thinking back, you know, they have had a history of, uh, of going for force buys like this. Yeah. Uh, and in some tournaments, it's actually been detrimental to mm -hmm. them. It's actually been what's, what's killed them. Is this insistence on doing these forces and then not making it work. Kenny's already gone, trying to be aggressive and squeak. I really like the idea. I mean, if you're going to go for a, what do we call it, chance AWP, then you kind of you kind of need to make something work with. You can't just wait around, because then if they're not pushing that, what are you going to do, right? So you want to find an early kill, then rotate around and find a new kill. Keep going like that. So it's the right idea, just didn't get the shot off. Uh, he's just really, definitely aiming a little bit wide to the left there. But... This looks like Doja's gonna get smoked out. Are they gonna try and actively hunt Doja? He's still waiting around in Squeak. The bomb is making its way through A-Main now, so Hellraisers, they're looking like they want to head towards the safe site. And we might see what you were just talking about, Samla, which is Angel coming out at Speedway and essentially cancelling Maniac's position here. If Angel actually helps to push with the rest of the team, it's gonna be really tough, but are they again, rotating back? Again, Hellraisers with this sick mid-round call. I don't know... I don't know how they got the information this time, though. They got so much... I, this must be Feel or perhaps Doja, but I mean... Doja being in that position potentially here is the steps, but I doubt it. I mean, Titan really have just committed so much of their forces to this A site. And it's existence all alone on the B side. He gets completely overwhelmed right off the bat. Doja takes that RPK as well, so there's the Lurk paying off. Now it's a two-on-four situation again, and they know where Apex is with that AWP. Yeah, time to run away. No chance at all. And Hellraisers know it. They, uh, Mu, who was holding in, in checkered, could hear him running away. Mm -hmm. So now Adrian is going to come in. And they're already out hunting. Definitely a good idea. I mean, last time around when they made this mid-round call to go B, it was really obvious that because Angel got the two kills and they know that someone threw the pop flash for that uh, execution to work, they know that there would have been three people at A. So it's a pretty easy call to say, right, well, then let's go B. Um, this time around, I'm not sure exactly what sparked that. And you're right, it could just be like intuition or... I mean, this is what makes really, really the, the best in-game leaders are able to do this a lot. And it's not, it's not always entirely clear why. Um, maybe a good call from a teammate. Who knows? It's definitely uh, what won them the round, though. That's really important. Yeah, I mean, the, right now we're just seeing instead of this like the mule headedness that we've seen from the pa in the past from Hellraisers, where yeah. they just kind of focus in on a site and then go for it, which is why Titan also <coughs> could be going for the very fast rotations because they're just, they're just going off of well, you know, this is Hellraisers. We can't really expect much much subtlety. They rely heavily on picks, or they have relied heavily on picks and duels in the past. Hellraisers right now they've already come up with two very solid mid round calls to net them two rounds. There's the shot from Kenny, though. He doesn't hit that follow-up, but he knows that he got the leg. So Kutcher down to 17 HP here to start. Oh, the run boost over, but they get spotted an Angel. He just holds down Mouse 1, and Maniac is going to offer himself up. Just walks right into it. That was a cool run boost, and it was instantly killed by Angel as well. Kutcher following up with a double of his own RPK and existence gone, and it's now on Kenny to try and save the AWP. But that is probably not going to happen here. And actually, Doja will take him down, but even if not, they would have been all around him. 5-5, five, five. Hellraisers. Ooh, they are looking really hot. Yeah, they're looking sick right now. And something to point out, you know, it's not the end of the world. I mean, Maniac did have a rifle, but then it was three pistols on the rest of the team. So yeah, it's not the end of the world that Titan lost that round. I mean, it was going to be close one way or another. Now this round here, if something goes wide, I mean, if it, something goes crazy at the beginning here, Titan are going to be just sobbing big, fat, salty tears, basically. This is such a key round right now for them. They've invested everything they have in it, and they need to keep ahead of Hellraisers. Well, they can't let Hellraisers get up to six rounds ahead of them. They're going to counter boost. No, oh, they're going to push double instead. That's actually, this is a cool variation. Is he going to be able to jump up on the rare container? He's not going to risk it. Apex will go down, though. They will have no chance of knowing that existence is in here. That's hugely unlikely. And the bomb is actually back here. There's no idea, though. It's behind the wall. He hasn't seen it. Oh, no. Angel taking out Kenny. That's not going to help things. If existence can hit the timing properly here, though. 
Maniac but... holding his own on the A side. That's going to help. His hold. Oh, he spots one more. Goes back for it. And Mu is there with the C set 75. Now it's all on Maniac. 1v2. Bomb has been picked up here. And Kucha is in a godlike position to deal with this. This is going to be so tough for Maniac to realize. And if he re if he shows himself up and out, Kucha is going to flank around him. He has to get the instant kill on Mu and then really realize what's happening. And he won't. Kucha's coming up from behind. Oh no. Cue the Jaws team. Maniac turning around for it. And he ends up going down. So 6 to 5. I. He got so, the feel on. Like, he yeah, did turn around, though. He, That's around. he could have very well just sat there expecting the second man to be on the side already. If Hellraisers can transpose this play, this um, mentality or whatever it is that's going on, onto the CT side, because one of the most frustrating things about Hellraisers is their CT setups are essentially just five different people holding different positions and hoping to win them. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, then everything falls apart. And I really hope that's changed now. It's been, it's been, like I said, the most frustrating team to watch for such a long time, but... This is looking a lot better. A lot better. Oh, this is fantastic. This is a Hellraiser to be born right now. And Titan is certainly struggling. And again, Titan, Forcer Pistols, they go for a bit of an awkward buy as well. This is going to just even up their money. Next round, they're going to have enough money for rifles. So still, very patient play actually coming out here from Titan as well. Not willing to show themselves as RPK basically taking advantage of a little pixel in the sacks there. Yeah, not a bad idea. He's got Kenny there to help him as well. He's gonna go for that peekaboo. That's going to set it up for Kenny. Adrian getting away with so much here. They could have probably killed him much sooner, but um, the timing just wasn't right there for a nice shot from Kenny. Is he going to be able to follow up on anybody? It doesn't seem like it, so Moo probably should have been gone, but he's still alive and existence. Oh, they're going to find him anyway. They're not even going to let him live. Mm, he hears the steps as well. So he knows he's going to be in position. Do they check this corner, though? Of course they do, but oh, the double kill! Oh, and he picks up the AK as well. Now he's actually got something to work with here. He's got something cooking, but they're gonna come around the corner. He nearly does it! Wow. Drops Angel to 5 HP. That could have changed everything. Move was only on 19. That should have not been that close, but that was really cool from existence. This is just a, a this is a really nice double kill. Oh, yeah. Point blank headshot on the Kucher. Thing of beauty. If he could have, if he could have just picked up that AK a split second earlier. If he didn't have that delay picking up that AK, he could have been in vent room fast enough to catch him coming out of vents. Maybe yeah. just turned it into the 1v1. We've seen Existence do it in the past. These kind of 1v4, 1v5 clutches. Zeus still has nightmares about that. I mean... Oh, well, a lot of pop flashes in, and Angel just going to trade this time. Oh. Well bang through Maniac, almost going to die to it, but Moo did burn alive to Apex's Molotov, and, and now we're back into a 3v4. And Titan invested into a double-up setup once again, so they, they really got to make this work. Titan needs to come up with the last three rounds here and just uh, close out this first half. Very scary position there for existence. But he does manage to sneak his way out of there, so... Man advantage maintained for Titan. That's the key point here. And now Hellraisers, it's going to come down to the picks. Can they find a way to catch somebody out of position here? Or just kind of group up and hit the right side, the correct side at the correct time. But Titan right now, they're going for a bit of a catch-all approach. They've got two yeah. guys on A, two guys on B. Just saying, okay, if you guys come at us, we're going to have, you know, a well-defended site wherever you go. Oh, but actually the middle is the one weak point, and that's what they're realizing. Oh my god, the timing. The timing, and then the nade onto Kenny, who has no Kevlar. Runs right back in, and Kenny still picks up the double. Very, very impressive. That looked like it was going to be uh, completely fatal to him. Just looking away exactly when they walk out like that. Could really screw it up for you. 6-7. The 14th round is coming up here. Yeah, good job on Kenny. Woo! That duck right back down again. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. Uh, going into the 14th round now, this is very entertaining first half between Titan and Hellraisers. Yeah. I mean, this has been incredible. Everything we were hoping for here going into this best of three, definitely a very even match between both of these teams. And Hellraisers getting up to seven rounds now on their T side. They're just looking fantastic. Double up again for Titan, though. They really are focusing on this strategy in particular for this, uh, for this map right now on their CT side. It's not necessary to go for the double op, but it looks like Titan, this is a new approach, or for them at least, a new approach here that they want to make work. They're thinking, Matt, when were we the absolute best? It's like Kenny and Kali both hopping. Kenny and Kali, that's two. Yeah, let's do that again, just without Kali. Pop flash again, it's worked really well for Titan. This time it's going to work again. Angel will uh, end up going down, and there's no one there to back him up. And the bomb is all the way back towards T spawn as well. Dosha. Failing that second flashbang and trying for a bit of a wall bang. Five bullets left to pick off Kenny, who really wanted to engage and probably didn't need to. But um, 
That is so sick, though, that bait by Doja. He's like, I run out of bullets, man. Open the door. Yeah. Bam. Three bullets left, and he hits the shot. And the go back to tweak up the bomb. I think that's Doja going to pick it up here. The time now is starting to worry me, though, at least. 30 seconds is really not a lot of time. If they don't kill Maniac very fast here, this could get ugly. Actually, they're going to go back to the middle. They're going to end up with B, and that's even worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're going to go back through vents right now. There's three players here. <gasps> Existence holding out in the open, though. This is such an exposed position. He realizes it in time. He sets up now. He's realigned, so he's going to be on this B site, on the site itself, holding behind the boxes. But his support apex has rotated off. Nine seconds left. He hits the first one, but then way over commits, and he manages to get picked off by the remaining two players. Apex trying to hold the line. Three seconds. Now impossible, unless they can get the kills. It is impossible for Hellraisers, Hellraisers rather, to win this round. Yeah, the one kill Apex got was on the guy carrying the bomb, and that actually killed the round for them. So, yeah, the clock there, just a little bit low. I mean, I, I, I saw it at around 30 seconds when they were picking up the bomb. That is not a lot of time. That I mean, the bomb, you see where it is? Um, actually, you see it on the map there. It's like just right outside of T-spawn. Just imagine you spawn on this map every time with 30 seconds left, and you have to try and make a ch uh, you know, choice. That is not cool. 15th round is coming up now, and Hellraisers, at least they have the money. Titan, though, really done a decent job trying to come back here. And, I mean, at 8-7, I would say that's a really good round for Hellraisers, but it definitely isn't the victory yet. I mean, they still need to do a lot more. Oh, far from it, yeah. But they go for the aggressive push Ooh. there to take over. Existence with this angle. Could they Molotov RPK back here? They have a lot of Molotovs. I think they must have seen the shots come in. There's a grenade back there. RPK, is he going to have to move? No, he's still back here. And Adrian, Kutcher, and Angel each picking up a kill. Maniac trying to come through the vents. Jumps down. Perfect timing. Gets the one. And then gets traded on, which means now Kenny has to be a little bit magical here. Bomb planted. He is going to have such a tough time. I'm not sure what you can really do to get in here. He's got one smoke, no kit, no armor. Jesus, and this guy's got an infinite number of flashes over here. Finally runs out. That's Doja holding down the site itself. Now Kenny even worried about getting flanked. And he's going to get shot in the side of the head by Adrian, who's holding from B-Halls. So what a turnaround here for Hellraisers at the end. It looked like a real brawl there on the B-Site. Yeah. I, I don't know. This was a really entertaining first half. It really was. In Excited to see Hellraisers play. I hope they're going to be able to bring a similar feel to the CT side now. More setups, more relying on team play. That would be really nice. Oh, wow. And Titan, um, having uh, having some issues here. I mean, I think especially maybe that one force-up um, that didn't quite work where they had the uh, the one-up that got picked up early on in that round. Definitely a bit scary for them. Mm. Oh, when Kenny had it. Yeah. They got caught out at Squeak. Yeah. It is a lot of rounds that could have gone either way, but right now, yeah, Titan, a lot of these are coming down to duels. And again, Titan basically just going for this. I mean, this is now their approach to their T-side pistols is go for just straight Kevlar, go for straight up fights. We look to take the duels. So Apex, now they're getting a bit of a read, perhaps. Perhaps they can have a bit, a bit more of an idea here, seeing as how they only spot the one man holding back at CT. This has now become a very popular way to hold for CT side, at least. Envy like to do this as well, where they have four players kind of gathered up, one in mid, three towards B, and then the one man holding way back by car in CT spawn. Yeah, I mean, this is a way of saying we'll play retake on A. If you put the bomb down, we'll have the two Molotovs, so we can force you out of back A site, and that's it. That's all we need. Angel taking out Apex, going for a little bit more here on Existence, and almost dropping him, but then almost getting dropped himself with a headshot there. Kucha to fall. And now they have the bomb site. Let's see if these Molotovs are going to be useful at all. Dosha is already very low, so they need to at least stay alive for the retake. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And actually, Titan are sort of almost playing proactively here, trying to not get caught at the back of site. And they'll get existence. Perfect flank. Perfect flank, and you can hit the shots. At least that keeps them guessing right now. That keeps them on. It's Angel down to 7 HP, and he has to worry about the backstab. Existence makes it work. Steps out, picks up one RPK to take out Mu, and it is going to be Existence to collect the last frag. 13 HP on him, and he takes out Adrian with a headshot at the end. So Titan... Hellraiser's basically saying, hey, we'll go for the retake, but Titan never really letting them get close enough to the site to even put that into motion. Wow. It's kind of a cool idea, in fact. I mean... If you keep the two Molotovs at B and they push B, well, then you have two Molotovs to stop them, which in the pistol round is amazing. If they play, if they go for A, then you can do the retake. The only thing that really screwed up um, Hellraiser in that round was the fact that Titan was so aggressive at Chuck, which means they never even got into a position. Normally, uh, or maybe like 
yeah, most commonly, the T's will just kind of be holding inside the site and waiting for a long time to really get there. They'll sort of allow you to get up to the truck and even to the next corner before you start fighting them. So I think actually Titan's aggressiveness in that round sort of really turned it around on Hellraisers. Mm, definitely a bit of a peak of the moment here for existence, though. Both of them able to back off. Oh. Apex all by his lonesome. That was like a series of headshot by Moo. That was really cool. Nice aim. Nice and aim, also... RPK, that's so low. Yeah, that's the thing. RPK has managed to pick up two kills, though, so it's going to help things along. Moo's got an MP7 to work with now, and Adrian with that 5-7 takes the fight straight up with Kenny and drops him down to 3 HP. So low, everybody. RPK catches out Moo. But how are they getting these kills? Kenny's got 3 HP. RPK just picks up that kill when he had 8 HP left. And now it's Kucher all alone here, 1v3. 40 seconds left on the top, on the clock as well, so Titan have a little bit of time, and they're spreading out as well. They want to see if this guy's lurking around somewhere in the back lines. Yeah, they don't just want to pick up the bomb and then run into him. The thing is, if Maniac dies, all of a sudden the round is winnable. And in the middle here, Maniac will fall, and he's kept shooting. That would have been the kill, but RPK to run in and pick it up. Quad kill from RPK, in fact. And that's going to put it at 9-8. That was a very scary round. Imagine if Kucher... I mean, there's no way he could have known, but if you click one more time and... And RPK ran into it. Oh, God. <clears throat> Altogether too close. And, well, Titan. Wow. Oh. Titan going for a bit of an exist. I mean, an exist and envy approach as well here. They don't bother re-equipping, but then again, it's Apex. Apex is actually one of those players who's really adopted, well, adapted, adopt, adopted the Tech-9, adapted well to the Tech-9. I mean, he's done a number of things with the Tech-9, some of them ungodly, but most of the time, he's just one of these guys who can walk around and get incredible shots down. Nice nade there on the move. That's gonna hurt him. But existence also skimping, going for the tech nine right now. This is uh, this is still this is a little bit of greed coming out from Titan. Yeah, but it's working super well. They lose nobody. Sort of a mirror opposite of the first round uh, or the the last round where they actually ended up losing almost everybody. This time it's a lot better. And now Hellrace is gonna pick up the AWP on Moo. I was wondering if it was gonna be Kucha doing it instead, uh, because Kucha is actually a really capable CT side offer. Mm. For some strange reason, he does pretty well. If you just put him in an angle and say, just you know, hold this angle forever, and that's good. Yeah. Does, he does great work at that stuff. But it's like um, the auto turret in Alien, yeah. You know? yeah, exactly. Oh. And some aggressive pushes over here onto the V side. Look at this. They're going to be able to get right up on here, and there's the first kill. Oh, but Angel again. He's like the king of double sprays. It's like, you take out my mate, I'll take one more, thanks. That's incredible because they were actually different heights as well. So it's really hard to connect with the, with that double spray. Kenny over here doesn't get the shot off. Looked like that should have been an opening as well. That would have brought it back at 3-3 as it is now. Hellraisers actually have a pretty good shot at doing this. They're a man up. Still plenty of time for Titan to find one more kill though. And this, is, this, is, this is since the update essentially. You know, the Kenny where missing shots that you really don't expect him to miss. For the longest time, we consider this man to be the godlike offer. And there we go. Very nice shot onto Kucher there. Back quad boxes. And he's going to be able to pick that up and open up the A site. But they're making it look like it's going to be A site. But with the nades there thrown by Kenny. But they're wrapping back around towards the B site. And it's going to be Angel here. Very common position to hold. Does quite a bit of damage to Maniac. But he fails to get the kill existence. Instead, we'll find the headshot first. That was so close. Kenny ready and waiting. Is he going to see the gun barrel? Well, now they definitely know that someone's up there. No grenades left on the Hellraiser side to try and go for the retake and the smoke up as well. It's going to be really rough. Adrendo comes in, picks up the one, and then it's back site here. This is actually pretty good for Hellraisers. They might be able to do this. The smoke is up. He does have a kit as well. They want to see if they can make their way through here. The smoke's going to clear any second now. He kind of has to go for it. Otherwise, it's not going to work out. I think that was his timing window. Picks up the one. Maniac still on 10 health, but in a really good spot to seal this round. Just has to wait. It is he going to peek it? He will with a headshot as well. And if Adrian had got the kill, then he actually would have had time anyway. So um, Maniac, really good round for him. Really good round, but really risky round, right? So scary. What, one tap away as well from Adrian, and he's gone. Yeah. Not hearing the tap as well on the bomb. That's the other thing. You know, you're, you're waiting to hear that defuse sound, so I'm really surprised that Maniac would even take the risk when there was time enough left for a defuse if the man had a kit. So it's wondering, risky business there. I mean, the distance between the bomb and, and checker there is actually pretty far. I'm wondering how much you do hear it at that point. It's going to be a little bit scary, at least. Mm, yeah. Well, that puts Hellraisers on an eco. Kucha, though, will not really care. Still picks up Maniac at the beginning of that round and does get himself dropped down to about 30 health. Did they pick up their rifle for it? I don't think so. 
Oh, Kenny getting caught out here. Has to try and run, but actually stays and fights and gets dropped by Kucha. Existence just trying to make sure, but they will steal the AWP. Oh, that's a bit of a problem now, and that's to Mu as well, the Hellraiser's offer. Apex, though, he's infiltrated the lineup. This could definitely be the turnaround for Titan. If they gave up a round like this, it's going to inspire such a lot of confidence in Hellraiser's. And Apex spots out one guy, wants to see if there's a second one here. And if he had taken a few more steps, he would have realized, but um, still that opening kill is big. He turns around for it, and Dosha, did you not have the info? Did they not realize where that was from? No, yeah, they must have realized. Yeah. I think that's just like straight up bravery from Doja. It's like, okay, then we'll walk out. He's going to realize that Angel is still working on this side with that 5 7 up close. RPK not realizing. Manages to readjust his aim in time, though, to get that kill. But Mu is here. Perfectly timed flash to stop him short from, well, to stop him from peeking, to stop that bomb carrier from getting onto that site. He just goes charging through. In fact, he's going to drop existence. Existence not realizing that the man had actually rushed onto that site. What a scary round. Again, Titan barely making it out, but they are making it out. It's now a four-round difference here. Slowly building their way to a victory on the first map here. Cash. Second map, by the way, is Train, which is very cool. That's the one Hellraiser's picked. So, I mean, this could be a chance for a third map, in fact. I mean, you've got to assume Hellraiser's got something planned on Train. Oh, it could be a chance for a 2-0. Hellraiser's... <clears throat> they're down, but they're not out. They've still got a shot at this. Apex now going to set it up, and it looks like we're going to have the change of pace here from Titan. They know that this is an expensive round for Hellraisers, that they've invested heavily, and Adrian and Kucha are just going to completely slaughter this push. Sometimes it's not the best idea to go running through smoke. Not if Kucha's on the other side, apparently. That triple kill shutting down the whole round in existence. What do you do now? <laughs> it actually is important for him now to get a couple of kills in. I mean, if he get, it gets one, that's kind of decent. If he could get two right now, it'd be so big. Because allowing Hellraisers to get around away with a round where they have four people living mm. is obviously not cool. But I mean, it's going to be the end of the round here. Maru has been waiting patiently for a long time. Oh. Well, 40 seconds. Still a very long time for him to actually make a move. Yeah, he wants them to make the move first. It's almost like he knows. I mean, that door being open is a little bit suspicious, right? You do look at that door and think, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> wow, but then he realizes 22 HP as well. If Mu were to just wallbang through, he can stand behind in, like, NBK corner and just put a bullet through that wall. That would be enough to take out existence. Well, it could be interesting. There's one attempt. Existence realizing, 8 seconds, 7 seconds, he's going to open it and come charging through and won't get the kill on Mu, sadly, but it's still a nice idea. I mean, he wanted them to make the mistake. He wanted them to come in and find him, which I think is very reasonable. Um, Titan's still able to put together a buy here, so that's not the end of the world for them. A little bit sketchy, though, uh, but they want to make sure that Hellraisers don't build any economy. So this is like another power play coming out. Exactly right. It's all about pressure now. Pressure. And Kenny, he's got that Tech-9. We've seen him do magical things with it as well. Just up there with Apex, so... Definitely not, uh... Almost with that pistol in hand. And there you go. That's why RPK pushes aggressively into B halls. No change there. RPK does favor that position on the map. One thing to note is that Maniac, he's only just hanging around a squeak. So as far as the T side, when they go back to default Titan, it doesn't look like they've changed a lot as far as the positioning is concerned. Who's playing what on the T side? Maniac still floats around Squeak around Squeak Door. RPK still floats around B, and then you kind of have like the kill squad roaming around in between them. So yeah. that still functions. Oh, the Molas are up there. They're gonna force him out into the middle. In fact, Adrian will go and get the kill on existence. Either way, they're gonna do the double boost over, and Adrian's gonna get caught here. No chance to survive. Even if he got the one kill, he would have definitely fallen either way. Now four v three. And Doja playing back of sight here. And this is one of those, this has to be one of those magical individual performances. And Doja's kind of the guy for it. I mean, he has some pretty sick aim. If they could just get a couple of kills on him, but he actually rotates out just a little bit too soon. Now the B bomb side is completely undefended, though. Titan, they're not realizing this. They should, because RBK is in there. Oh man, this is going to be brutal. Unless they could have picked up that initial frag right there. RPK takes out Doja, but it's too late now. They're committed to this site, and Titan right now are managing to barrel on. Mu is going to pick up Apex, but that is it. All three kills go their way.
They're able to clean up the site in time. Only 18 seconds left when, when they began that push onto the A site. They're not allowed any mistakes at that point. Nice round from Kenny with a triple. Him and RPK actually tied for score, doing really uh, a fine job at 19 kills each. Hellraisers, they put together a bit of a force here. It is not perfect. Uh, the one pistol, the FAMAS as well, and a definite lack of grenades. In fact, with, with so few grenades, I kind of want to see them go aggressive. I try and push something, especially maybe a red B. I think that would be a smart choice here. Well, they're kind of hoping for a VP, right? It's like, please rush through the smoke at us. Please make it easy for us. We would really appreciate it right now. And Kenny's taking out Doja, but Doja only had a pistol, so it's not the end of the world. Once again, Existence getting caught out there. Kenny does return, take out Moo, but then Adrian with that AWP. Interesting thing to note is that Moo wasn't the one holding that op. It was Adrian instead, so... Showing a bit of versatility here on the Hellraiser's lineup when it comes to uh, the sniper, sniper role. RPK for a moment. He was actually tracking him through the wall. That's so funny. If that had been flusher, there would have been a, mi a million new threads about it. Kucho going to be taking down Maniac. Obviously, he was tracking him because he was looking up at heaven and the guy was running up um, in the background on the uh, slope. Apex will go down Angel with a really clean kill then. 10 to 13, so Hellraisers. I mean, the Force are really working this time. Really big uh, decision for them there. Titan, economically hard reset here. And in the 24th round as well, now it gets scary. This is where it's anybody's game. I mean, even a three-round lead, I'd say it's about even who wins this now. Yeah. I agree. Hellraisers are perfectly capable of running it back, especially now. They need to get a solid eco in here where they keep four players alive. And then they'll be just they'll be well on their way because they'll have a bit of a cushion to work with. So Titan are just hoping right now for Hellraisers to overextend themselves somehow. RPK hard ecoing though, so he's just gonna be kind of gathering info over here on the B site and seeing if he spots out anybody. But it's not really going to be the case. And there are gonna be no aggressive pushes here taken by Hellraisers. They really are playing this very carefully indeed. Yeah, but unlike at least unlike previous um, Hellraiser CT signs, they actually do have setups that allow for good trading and a little bit of coverage of each other. So they're not just all standing one, you know, one person alone, essentially. They've got a little bit of, a, of an overlap on the map. Back aside, Kutra, I think, is playing up at A, which is all right. That is, that's fine, because he's got the potential for Adrian to come into the middle as well. And Adrian should have coverage. They're just going to fall back and play it safe. But yeah, I'm I'm liking this new Hellraiser team. They look a lot more solid. Oh, absolutely. Kutra. Again, look at that in the blink of an eye. Double for Kutra, double for... it. Well, no. Double for Adrian and a single kill for uh, for Angel. It's well. actually Kutra right now sitting at the top. A lot of these kills... Well, one of them was in a key round. That was a buy round, a rush from Titan. But he's had a few eco frags as well. So, you know, we'll kind of like balance things out. But he's... He's leading on the frag board right now on the map. 22 kills to his name. So Kucha doing fantastic. And he's not usually the man that we're talking about, or the man that we see sitting at the top of the frag board for, uh, for Hellraisers. Moo almost getting caught here, but he's got a little bit of backup. Good counter flash coming out. Tyson trying to make their way in, but Doja's going to shot one down. Angel to pick up existence in the middle. And now it's all on Maniac, and he is on the bomb site. Could maybe get a bomb plant in, but he's going to get caught by Adrian, so no chance there. 13 to 12. Titan should be able to make a buy now at least, and we'll see if they can close out this map. I mean, if Train is the second map. You really, really want to win your own map. Hell yeah, especially if it's Hellraiser's pick. It's their pick. They're yeah. saying, yeah, we want to take you to Train, buddy. Let's go. Let's dance, Green Monkey. I mean, it's possible. The Hellraisers, I mean, if they control this round right here, they could close out this map because Titan, then their money, they're never going to get a better shot, a better buy. Yeah, I think that's about accurate. So it's just like, close out this map right here, and then Hellraisers, it's your playground on train. Ooh. Flash through as well, Maniac. Oh, they he just dodge each other. This is unreal. Maniac's actually made his way through, and now he could kill Kucha clean. Kucha will have no chance of knowing that someone snuck by here. This, got, this time he is pretty much godlike. I can't believe this is happening. This just seems like kind of circus almost. But he's not... Oh, he spots the rifle! Is it in time? Yes, it is. Kenny stops, but it's not going to be good enough. Maniac gets the kill. That surprises Kucha quite a bit. Kucha, Maniac, does he realize he's so close? Well, now he will. Kucha picks up a double. This is like an almost unbelievable round. That could have gone... That could have played out a hundred different ways. And you're right. He called it out the second. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's someone... There's someone playing in the nook there, and it still wasn't quick enough. Existence and RPK are left, 2v3, bomb goes down, and it's planet default, which is not great, especially not for Existence is playing. 
If they kill RPK, then Existence will do, can do nothing to stop the defuse at all. He's got a Molotov, but even throwing the Molotov from in there onto, on, on the side is super difficult. Oh, there's a Molotov onto the back, and there you go. RPK just trying to buy some time. Nade's going down as well. He's getting roasted. He's getting toasted down to 36 HP. There's the smoke, and there are the bullets. And this smoke actually cancels out any Molotovs. Oh, he's going to be right on. There's the fire, and they can't really defuse. They're going to have to run. He made Get it work. Out of here. Existence. What a great play. That has to be perfect. And those Molotovs are so dodgy as well. If you hit the the, the frame of the door then, that's it. The round is gone. Really like, nicely played. I thought that that smoke was close enough where the, the, the Molotov would touch it and just, psh, you know, go away. Look at this timing. This, that, is this was horrible for Maniac, though. How heartbreaking is that? It's like you get the perfect timing, and yet Kutra just dodges you, goes on to short. Yeah. You're not able to get the that big kill that really opens up anything. You're just getting info like, well, I'm on the site, but I don't know where anybody is. Wow, yeah. 14 to 12. What a way to win a round as well from Titan. They're all dead, but the fire put up by existence is going to be just enough. Angel in the middle. There's no one there to counter boost him, but he's actually playing very much alone. Like, how Angel is playing right now is exactly how all of Hellraisers would be sitting on, on any other map on, on the CT side in the past, where unless he just delivers on getting the frags, and, and not just like a trade, getting a double kill essentially, it's not worth it for them to do it. But uh, the rest of Hellraisers are playing together, which is uh, more or less all right. And now they're coming into the middle to help out as well, so this is not the end of the world. Now they set it up, and Moo is there. Sandbags gets one, gets caught out in the open, but lives with two HP. And Adrian, in the meantime, takes out existence. Kenny does take out Moo, finally. But it's still a man advantage here for Hellraisers. Angel still holding up close, and he hasn't shown himself yet. They don't know that somebody's behind here on drop. Doja takes out RPK, though, so the Lurk is not successful on the B site for Titan. And actually, this is this is almost a worst-case scenario for Titan. They only lived with two guys in the last round. Ooh. Nice, Kenny does check before dropping, so that's actually pretty solid work there. They're not done yet here, Titan, but it's so important now. The pressure is on for them because they absolutely need to win this round after lose after winning the last one. They cannot afford to get their economy reset right now. Now that would really tie the score at 14-14, which is a little bit too close for comfort when you're playing on the T side. Kenny almost exposing himself there. Kucha in the background. Is he gonna realize nine seconds left? Eight seconds. He's on the B-bomb side, though. Maniac trying to run up, gonna make the crossover. He almost does it. It sits down right in front of Doge, almost like a dare, just saying, come on, shoot me then. Shoot me, and he did. 14 to 13. And he did, yeah. Yeah, Titan. <laughs> oh, man. Look at that, three players, four players, basically, sitting at 1,400, 1,500. That They're is, about to get robbed. That's a nightmare. They are about to get robbed. Talk about the pressure right now that is on Titan. And yeah, is it is it timeout time? Because yeah, Maniac, Maniac is probably call is probably talking right now pretty heavy, pretty seriously, like just going over something. Existence is sitting up on the, you know, he likes to get closer to the sky as well. Feels like you know the his tinfoil hat picks up better reception up there. I don't know how it works, but <laughs> Existence. It's just a hard eco out of Titan, and they're they're using it at like an impromptu timeout basically. I mean. When you're this close to Chernobyl or whatever it is in the background, maybe some tinfoil will do you good. Maybe like a lead coat. Good. You could do that. Instead, you have to be buff as hell to run around with a lead coat, though, man. That thing must weigh a ton. Yeah, you actually don't really need that anyway. I mean, like I'm pretty sure, like alpha and beta radiation don't just they don't go for anything anyway. Like paper will basically stop that. It's only when you get up to like uh, gamma radiation it gets a little bit tough. You'll be fine. That sounds lovely, dude. It's just, it's just. Are you the, looking at me when you say that? It's Andrews? just the particles you don't want. Like, don't, don't eat it. Don't eat the radiation. But apart from that, you'll be all right. RPK has already gone down. The Glocks here not going to do too much in the middle. Dosha seems to have almost fallen asleep over at the B-bomb site. He just, he can't deal with these timeouts. He's like, I just don't have time for it. <laughs> Move. <laughs> I like that. Just getting a little bit of help here. He's on four health as well. Leave Moo alone. What, where is this team? <laughs> like, how is he? It feels like, feels like an eternity that he's just stuck over there. Yeah. What's Adrian's, what is Adrian's uh, weapon called? Is it called chocolate caramel or something? What? His, uh, his M4. So what's your M4, Adrian? Come on. Well, he the name this knife, though. Come on. Scores at 14 14, and Titan will go for the four subs. They want to play for overtime. They want to try and win here, and I think that's a, a reasonable choice. Even though it's just a deagle in existence. Yeah, chocolate caramel. Okay. I, I don't know why. He's got soul. 
there's a you know an opening for an interview question right there. Grenade out. Not gonna kill anyone or do any significant damage either. The Titan are playing really far back on the map currently because Hellraisers were pushing up just a little bit. You can see they're super defensive. Hoping for someone to make a mistake. And now after the aggression over at B, they sort of run out of there and just leave Dojo alone once again. Wow. They're going so far. Yeah, let's check those kinds of angles. Talk about being thorough. Multiple steps in the B halls, but they, that might not be enough quite for Hellraisers to make a call off of. Oh, Kucha. I mean, Titan checked the other corner. Surely they'll check this one too if they, if they get this far. They don't have any more Molotovs though. No, that might be the problem. Boost up into the middle. RPK checking in towards A main. Kucha, he's going to be the perfect kill there. Next in line, Apex is going to fall as well. Hellraiser is just crushing Titan in this particular round. It's going to be Maniac finally to reply, but existence goes down, and so does Maniac, and it's 15 14. And Titan are going to be out of money. This, they, I'm calling it already. Tech 9 trained to be. That's the, that has to be the play. And the fact that RPK doesn't even check that angle. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, decent nades, at least. They have that yeah. going for them here, Titan, but you're right. It's just well, straight actually tech with the, across the board. Actually, with the Molotovs, it's a lot easier to throw them at A than it is to B. But, um, yeah, I would have I would have said B just because I love that. But they are sort of rotating towards the A bomb side instead. It's your little B, man, every day. Yeah, exactly. Oh, they go for the B split smokes, actually. They're very thorough with the smokes as well. Even one up on top of Sky, on top of the hut. So... This could be interesting here, Maniac. Kind of just his usual lurk spot over on that A site. And Titan now getting control of short. They could potentially split several different ways here. Moo is going to take out existence, but Maniac is there. Maniac to pick up one. Maniac overwhelms Moo, but he's all by his lonesome now. 1v3. He's got the rifle, and the bomb is next to him, but he needs to get this kill, and he will do so. Takes out Adrian. Takes out the second one as well. Two bullets left in the tech nine, and he couldn't finish off Doja. So 16-14. What a close game. And Hellraiser's just making it out on top. I'm really excited. I really feel like Hellraiser's shot is something cool. Um, if they've only just moved to Kiev, and they're already able to sort of come together as a team like this, that is really cool. I mean, this is this is the best I've seen Hellraiser's for a long time. I think so. I think yeah. Yeah, any iteration of Hellraiser's pretty much, apart from... I mean, when they've played at their absolute best, when they were definite, you know, like bracket wrecking mm. form, Hellraisers have been uh, have been solid. But like this, it's good to see that Mu is uh, seems to be adapting well. Not really delivering too much on frags there. Quite a few opportunities yeah. missed in the first half with the AWP. True. Um, not really getting many kills on the board, but didn't really seem to slow down the team as much because the calls were on point. That seems to yeah. be the main uh, the main strength now for Hellraisers, at least the fact that. They had so many solid mid-round calls on their T side to exploit the Titan defenses. Yeah. Really, really Im impressive stuff. Um, Titan, on the other hand, I mean, RPK and Kenny doing really well. Mm. Um, but definitely some stuff lacking uh, at the end. I mean, I don't know. It's kind of hard to put exactly like exactly what was wrong. But uh, there, was def def there was something missing on that. Uh, you don't want to just... It's like a cop-out if you say, like, oh, it was bad luck. you know. But a couple of those where it's like you want to kind of just like time it to throw in... You go for a bit yeah. of a power play, right? And you're like, okay, well, you know what? We're gonna go. We know that this is a very important round for them, that they're gonna that they might play safe. So let's go for a rush onto A. Yeah. But they they don't account for Kucher just holding that line from MBK corner and just catching them all as they come running out of the smoke like that. Yeah, so, I mean, true. You have some situations where it's like Titan go for the gamble, and unfortunately, some of their gambles just yeah. fell completely flat. I mean, it was a really close game, so I guess like it, there was not like anything major. It was 16-14. It was just uh you know a few rounds here and there. Mm -hmm. And that's all it's down to. That's going to be the first map now coming up. It's going to be trained for the first time that we've seen it here in a competitive match, at least in Fabri Masters. Not sure if it's been played in any other tournaments yet. I haven't seen it a single game I haven't yet. I have seen it yet so, either, um, so this is sick. And between yeah. these two teams as well, fantastic. Yeah. Hellraisers, this is their pick. So they're in a prime position to 2-0 Titan and get this, get into the winner match of this group of Group C. So, yeah. guys, I've, got, I've got like a hundred different theories about how this map is going to play out. And I mean, maybe I they're all going like to be a wrong. Kid at a candy store right now. Yeah, so I'm, like I'm super Christmas. excited. You're like, I'm come super on, excited. let's get over the break. Let's, no break, guys. Yeah, and I'm super scared as well because, like, I, I have, like, two or three smokes on this map that, were, that you know, when I when I realized it was possible, I felt so good. I was like, this is going to be so good. So I hope they haven't found them yet because then, you know, I'm going to feel like it wasn't so good after all. Either way, it's going to be coming up next. It's Train, so stay with us.